Let's spend some time to talk about how we store our data in all of our different reducers with Redux. So I'm talking specifically about what data structure we use inside of our reducers. A really common pattern is to use an array. So I might have reducer, and let's say that it's managing a list of different posts. And a post will just be, let's say, something like an object, it has an ID, it has a title and a body as well. But the really important part that I wanna point out here is that it specifically has an ID. So a very common pattern is to say that my reducer for working with all my different posts will return an array of posts. What are the implications of using an array to manage all of my data in Redux? Well, let's look at a couple of different options in here, kind of the different cases of actions. I've got my fetch post for dealing with fetching a singular post. I've got fetch posts, plural, for dealing with multiple posts. And I've also got update and deleting a post as well. So I'm going to make the case in this video that using an array for storing your data in Reducer is not a good approach, and instead we might want to instead use an object. So let's look at a couple slides that's going to illustrate this point. So one thing I want you to keep in mind, again, is that each post model that we have contains an ID. So in this case, like an ID of 23, but it's really just a unique integer of some type. So this is what our reducer might be pumping out if we are using an array to store all of our different posts. So when we have array-based storage, we get a piece of state that looks something like a key of posts, and that is pointing at an array of post objects. And each of these are individual objects with an ID, a title, and a body. So again, I want to make the case in this video that instead of using an array to store all of our list of posts, I want to use an object instead. So I'm going to refer to this as object-based storage. So in this case, here's my state object. I've got a key of posts again, but instead of just an array of posts, I have an object containing all of my different posts. The keys of this object are the IDs of each individual post. So you can see right here, I've got a key of 34, the value of which is the post with ID 34. And all the way down at the bottom, I've got key of 184 and a post with ID of 184. So each of these kind of rectangles off to the side represents an actual post object with an ID, a title, and a body. So let's think about some of the common operations. Uh, you know, what, what's, the, what's the difference? Why might we do this at all? What's, what are we gaining? What are we losing out on? Well, what we're gaining and losing is we're making it a lot easier on ourselves to commit some very common operations that we might expect to have to do with an array or an object. So I'm talking specifically about updating our state object. Let's look at some of the different operations that we might have to do. So this right here is a demo or kind of a, what we might do for an array versus an object whenever we are trying to read a specific record. So let's say that I wanna find a post with ID of 34, okay? So let's say that a user navigates in our web application to a URL of something like uh, myapp.com slash posts slash 34. So they're intending to visit post with ID 34. If we have an array-based storage, I would take my the ID of the post that I'm trying to find, and then I would use the find helper on the array and look through each post until I find the post with the correct ID, and then I would return it and say, okay, great, here's the, here's the post I'm trying to display to the user. So this isn't bad logic on the left-hand side. You know, we're using the find helper fantastically here. It's definitely good. But I'm gonna make the case that using an object instead is a dramatic simplification of logic. If we have object-based storage and we want to find a post with a very particular ID, instead of having to deal with all this find stuff over here, we can just say state.posts and then use the bracket notation and pass in, pass in post ID to find. Both of these methods right here would return me the same exact post, but the method on the right, I would argue, is significantly easier to implement, test, and understand. Let's look at a couple of other very common operations. So let's say updating a record. This is where things really start to get a little bit hairy. So on the array side, if I have some new post, like, you know, I just fetched this one and I need to update an existing post. So we're imagining that my state.post array already has post ID of 34 in it. Before I can insert this new post or this updated version of the post, I have to go through all of my different posts that I've already got and filter out the post with ID 34. 
And really what I intended to write here was something a little bit more like new state, new state. There we go. That's a little bit better. So we'd have to walk through all the posts in the array, dump the one with ID 34, and then insert the new one that we defined up here at top. On an object, however, the same operation, the same exact thing is dramatically simplified by using the spread operator inside of an object and key interpolation, both of which are features of ES6, I can create a new object, which is these outside brackets or braces. I say dot 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 state, which takes all of the existing posts out of my state. Then I create a new key value pair using key interpolation. So I say new post.id, which would resolve to 34. And then the value of that is the new post itself. Because I'm placing this key value pair to the right hand side of the dot 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 state, it will overwrite any existing records in the state object with key of 34. So that's the key here. Whenever I update a record, if I use this syntax right here, anything I put to the right will update any previous records with ID 34. So essentially we're kind of achieving the same effect here of deleting the existing post and inserting this new post. So this is kind of simulating an update. But again, I'm going to argue that the right hand side using an object is dramatically simplified logic compared to what we have on the left. So just one more here, deleting a record. So this is another very simple one. With an array, I've got post ID to delete. Maybe it's I'm trying to delete the post with ID 34. I will filter my post array and for whichever post, uh, you know, whenever I find one that has a post of ID to delete, which is 34, I'm going to dump it and the result is, hey, I, uh, I got my array without post of ID 34. Now in the case over here, I think I made a little bit of a mistake. We can use the lodash helper omit and really I wanted to do uh, something more like post ID to delete Thirty four. So by using the lodash helper omit, what omit does is it takes an object, which is state, it finds a key of whatever the second argument is, which is 34, and it just drops that key off the object. So it just deletes the key entirely. That's what omit does. So again, these are completely simple method or identical methods here in practice and how they update the state object. But on the right hand side, again, I'm going to argue that this is dramatically simplified logic compared to what we have on the left hand side. So let's see what this looks like in practice. Let's come back to our reducer over here, which is working with my array of posts. And again, this is all assuming that the uh, piece of state is going to be an array, so a list of posts. And I want to refactor this from an array of posts to an object containing all my different posts. So up at the top, I've got some initial state. Instead of using my array as my initial state, I'm going to say this reducer is now going to return an object containing all my different posts. So now inside of all these different methods or all these different cases, I get to dramatically simplify the logic. Note that the comments that I have here, like the action.payload equals equals equals, I just have the comment in here to be very clear about what the uh, action.payload property is. So whenever I'm fetching a singular post, so I'm underneath case fetch post, I'm saying that action.payload is a singular post. But whenever I'm fetching posts plural, so like multiple posts, it might be an array of different posts. Action.payload in this case, this array of posts, the array of posts in this case is something that's controlled by my API. So this might be something that I uh, requested a list of posts from, and we can't really control how that data is coming in. So note that in the case that we're fetching multiple posts right here, we will have to figure out a way to take these multiple posts and kind of turn it into the format that we're talking about here. An object where the keys are the ID of each post and the value is the post itself. All right, so let's do a little bit of refactor. I'm going to take out just the entire code block here because I really want to make the case that it's going to be dramatically simplified logic. So I'm going to take my existing state. I'll take action payload ID, which is the ID of the post. And then I'll take action.payload, which is the post itself. So again, take all my posts, create a new object, stick all my existing posts into it, create a new key value pair, 
with the ID and the post itself and copy that over all the existing posts. So if I have already fetched a post with ID, say, 22 or something, and I already have that in my state object, the second half of the statement right here will overwrite that existing post. So I do not have to worry about duplicates here anymore. Now in the fetch post example, again, we've got an array of posts. So I can't just, I need to kind of coerce this data structure. I need to take my array of posts and turn it into an object where the keys are the ID of the post and the values of the post itself. So we don't have to write any fancy for loops or any logic like that to make this happen. Instead, we can use Lodash again, specifically a method called map keys. So map keys takes an array and a string. Here's what it does. It looks for a property matching this string on each object in the array. Whatever, that, if that property, if it exists, it creates an object using that property. So in this case, I've got an array of posts and I say, look at each post and find the ID property. Whatever that ID property is, make it the key on this new object and then set the value to be the post itself. Okay, so kind of confusing words here. Let's walk through it in practice. Let's say that this first post over here, the one all the way to the left has an ID of three. So specifically an ID property of three. Map keys is going to look at the ID property. It's gonna see the three. So it's gonna create a key of three, and then it's going to take the entire post object, the entire post object that it was just working on and make it the value. So the purpose of map keys is simply to coerce our array of posts to the object matching the data structure that we want here. So map keys is absolutely indispensable for this entire uh, kind of object-based setup. So let's see what it looks like in practice. The entire purpose of this union by call that I have right here with the existing array uh, schema is to make sure that I overwrite any existing posts. So if I do a fetch post twice and I fetch the same list of posts, I wanna make sure that I'm not adding them all to my state and so I don't have a duplicate list of all the posts. But when we're using this object-based storage, this same exact uh, operation gets dramatically simplified as well. So I'll take all my existing posts and then I'll take dot, 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 map keys. Let's break this up to two lines just to make it a little bit more clear. We'll say new posts will be map keys action.payload. And on each of those posts, find the ID property, make it the key, and then the value will be the post itself. And so there we go. That's it. Dramatically simplified logic. And it also case, takes care of handling any duplicate fetch posts that I have inside of my uh, state object. Now, updating a post. This one is going to be identical to fetching a single post. Take all my existing posts take the ID of the post that I'm updating and make the value the post itself. So again, we take all the posts. If there's a duplicate, the second half of the statement will overwrite the existing post in there. Thus, it works as an update. And finally, with the delete post, I can return and I will omit and we'll just imagine here that action.payload is the ID of the post I want to delete. So maybe just to be clear, I might leave myself a comment where, hey, the action.payload here is the ID of the post I want to delete. So remember, omit is a lodash helper where it will find a key of whatever the second argument is on the first argument and just drop that key off the object. So this functions as a delete post. So this is pretty much it. Uh, without a doubt, this is dramatically simplified my reducer here. A amazingly uh, compacted difference between the array implementation and the object implementation. And the benefit of this, the secondary benefit of this is not only is it less code, but I'm also handling corner cases like, say, fetching a duplicate list of posts very well. I'm handling making sure that if I fetched a single post once already, I'm overriding the existing one and thus just updating it. So again, I highly recommend experimenting with objects instead of arrays for handling your data inside of your reducers. If you've enjoyed this video, I recommend you check out rallycoding.com. We've got weekly videos on tons of JavaScript topics 
everything from React, Redux, and general JavaScript, bug handling, frameworks, all that kind of great stuff. So check out rallycoding.com and I'll see you next week.